Hi, this is Krishna. Uh, I am working in the same group as uh, Prakash in uh, 5G infrastructure in uh, Intel uh, Network Platforms Group. Uh, I think exactly one year from today, last year, uh, I had provided uh, a training and, and the same session here in the same auditorium on our NEV SDK architecture. And we had even pro shown a demo based on FlexRAN and a drone uh, acting as a UE equipment. So what we are going to do today is uh, talk about uh, the further enhancements that we have done on our um, uh, network edge virtualization kit, which is basically enabling developers for developing apps and also for operators to deploy in their network. Uh, and, and do trials um, and we are also going to go through some of the enhancements that we have planned for the future releases. So uh, I, mean, I mean for us NEV SDK is a vehicle to basically to uh, enable application developers and, uh, and, and, and operators to do trials uh, for edge compute and, and um, and also sort of show IA as architecture of choice for edge compute. So as part of this, we use SDK as a vehicle to interact with various customers, enterprise, macro, and, uh, and, and, and uh, operators. Uh, and what we understand is the term edge varies with different uh, customers with whom we engage. And what you're seeing is the three representation. Uh, so there is an enterprise edge view, which is highlighted in uh, yellow. So that, that's on the left-hand corner where it's basically uh, uh, your uh, I mean enterprise applications, which is uh, l limited within an organization sort of setup. And, and you have uh, a CSP, CSP is cloud service provider like Amazon and Google and, um, and, 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 and Microsoft Azure. And lastly, COSP, and that's the term that we use for communication service provider or comm service provider like uh, operators like Verizon and uh, AT&T, right? So the, the concept of edge varies depending on the use case and the customers whom we interact. So for us, uh, SDK is the vehicle so that we can do the, let's say, the bare minimum that is needed for to kickstart the either the application development or the trial so that you can go into the commercial mode for deploying an edge solution very quickly. And that's what we do in our SDK. So just a little bit of history of our releases. So uh, there have been five releases of our SDK. And, and basically uh, we had started off on Atom-based platforms and quickly moved on to Xeon-based releases uh, because of more density and the use cases that we have seen during the deployment. So for us, we have seen wherever there is sort of VRAN sort of deployments, we see um, uh, Edge Cloud being a, 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 a candidate there for deploying deployment. And we, are, we have also seen Edge Cloud deployments where, uh, the, uh, where there is specifically just the Edge Cloud being deployed rather than requirement for having a VRAN solution. Right? So that's why we moved up to Xeon and, and, and also, uh, so Xeon class includes Xeon uh, SP, which is your uh, uh, server platforms and also the SOC, which is based on Xeon D. Um, so from software perspective, um, for us, we, we, we need to make sure all the silicon enhancements that gets into Intel architecture are exposed to application developers. And, and how do we project these silicon enhancements for application developers for, for basically the edge? That's our main criteria with, uh, for, for this uh, SDK that we have. So, I mean, you can, you can recognize that from, from the list of features that we support. 
So the SDK as such, Edge Cloud, supports uh, different types of deployments. Uh, I, we have a diagram in the next slide where the Edge Cloud can sit on S1 interface. I'll uh, let you know what is S1 uh, and, and also the SGI interface. This is all in the wireless uh, uh, network architecture. We also can consume traffic from an IP network or uh, just basically Wi-Fi or wireline. And also, I mean, which means that the apps as such are agnostic to where the traffic is coming from. So that networking complexity is hidden, first of all, by our SDK. And, and uh, so the, the networking piece comes with various baggage and stuff like customers having VLAN support, VXLAN, and, and, and uh, we support all those so that uh, effectively for an application developer, he doesn't need to do much or understand much about the networking complexity. Second is because of Xeon, uh, Xeon class of uh, servers, the deployment, it is a multi-core architecture, more denser platform having hundreds, tens of hundreds of applications on the edge. So we need to make sure the compute resources and also the I.O. and uh, memory resources, various resources on the platform are partitioned and also allocated to these applications effectively so that they do not miss the SLA because of uh, either because of uh, uh, oversubscription or misconfiguration or mismanagement of resource. So all these are hidden under what you see here as Wind River optimized telco cloud. So which gives us precise and clear partitioning of resource, which ultimately benefits application developers and operators so that if they say this particular real time app or low latency app needs to have this much IO bandwidth, needs to have this much compute, it always gets it every time, right? That's what is hidden behind this Wind River optimized telco cloud. And while we are working on this for Edge, we also enable various uh, uh, features that are in silicon like FPGA and stuff. We will go, go, go through that. And we make sure that it is upstreamed into mainline OpenStack and, and also exposed as a consumable API by the, uh, by the uh, edge, uh, a, a, edge vendors, edge cloud solution vendors, you know. Uh, so we also, uh, I mean, uh, you can see at the bottom, like we also s provide as part of this SDK uh, eNode B and EPC emulator. So if, if, if a customer goes with um, full-blown SDK deployment, so it's basically a mini data center based on OpenStack. So you set up that. You also have LTE network also set up. So if a customer wants to go down that route, we have that path. And if a customer who can be an application developer wants to get to writing an application very quickly, we have a simple model based on CentOS, which, which basically avoids all this other complexity. The APIs remain same. The lifecycle management remains same. They basically get the packets on the IP interface. So it, 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 it all looks transparent. So an application developed on the a, a standalone single compute node, we only need a single interface which supports DPDK. And once that criteria is met, it can be a, a small device like a Nook. Uh, application developed on that should seamlessly work on a Xeon class device. Uh, so we also added over this past year support for Kubernetes, cloud native deployment. We are seeing more traction for this on edge cloud. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the architecture of microservices. So the APIs, data plane, all of them remain same between VM deployment and what we call as container or cloud native deployment. Uh, we also support AWS Greengrass and Azure. That's a big improvement over last year. So uh, again, we'll go through what does that mean. So apart from normal edge cloud apps, we can onboard these IoT gateways, which were typically running on dedicated hardware. And rest of the performance tools, which analyzes the 
uh, for application developers various uh, parameters like uh, where, is, where are your cache misses, how much power is your application consuming and uh, where is your bottleneck or hotspots. All those are exposed through the test suite and the um, and in Intel tools that are sort of bundled as part of the SDK. So that's the sort of overview of where we are today uh, from compared to last year. Um, so this is a diagram of uh, the difference between 4G and 5G networks and also how our SDK is supporting these two deployments. So one of the key takeaway with 5G is in 4G there was no concept of edge cloud. Uh, edge cloud or MEC, right? In, in If you go and refer to up to release uh, 14 of 3GPP, there is nothing called MEC. Uh, MEC is only part of the HC specification. Uh, and, and, and so what used to happen was for any edge cloud deployment uh, on an LTE network, either it could have been between the base station and EPC, which is the S1 interface, which is a tunneled interface, right? And, and there, uh, basically, you, mean, you, you need to consume all the packets, look at how, which app is deployed on the edge, process them. If it is not deployed, you need to send it back to the main data center, right, or core network. Similarly, on the EPC, you need to have a, a, a concept of trying to filter out which application is on the edge and, and service them or send it to the data center. So we support these deployments in our uh, SDK. So with 5G, the good thing is um, Edge Cloud is officially a network function in the network, which means that an Edge Cloud platform needs to interact with other 3GPP network <coughs> elements, which includes next generation core, and it might also include GNode-B and uh, <coughs> uh, um, and other components of like control plane components of next, next generation core. So in 5G, we are upgrading our SDK to support this uh, deployment and the big architecture change here is that uh, the edge cloud platform or in, in 3GPP what they call as AF or application function needs to interact with uh, a couple of components in what next generation core uh, like uh, AMF and PCF these are the like you can con you can consider them as the control plane components of next generation core and configure what is here represented as UPF, which is the user plane function. So this user plane function as such can be considered as, uh, uh, which, which basically processes the user traffic and is not worried about the uh, control plane, which is about the session management and billing and, uh, uh, and, and, and subscriber information, right? So the U, once, once this uh, API or the interaction between the edge cloud and the next generation core happens, then what happens is that the traffic from the G node B, which is the next generation base station, comes to your next generation core, and all those traffic that are meant to be serviced on the edge will be diverted towards the edge cloud. Otherwise, the next generation core will send it to the normal data network. So here, the, uh, which means that the interaction here uh, is much more official and it's not ad hoc as in the 4G deployment. So looking a little bit deep into the architecture of our SDK and, uh, and, and trying to sort of uh, show the different areas of work we do and why we do this uh, is going to give you a, an impression of what you can achieve with this SDK, right? So three main areas of work we do are are in basically in the APIs, right, and the data plane, and the infrastructure optimization. So SDK APIs, when we work, when we started developing this for us, and even today, the reference for this is based on HC Mac. Why? Because HC Mac doesn't duplicate the work done in HC NFV. And we see in today's network that HC NFE or NFV based deployments are being considered standard. So what all you consider as part of OpenStack based deployments 
are basically that are defined by HC and FV. So HC MEC takes advantage of the existing HC and FV, NFV deployments. So it, it, it was a reference for us to use and develop APIs. We are not saying we are 100% com compliant to these APIs, but we took that as a reference, right? And what we do is in this API, develop REST-based API and the infrastructure that is needed to onboard application, which is like authentication, authorization, service discovery, and notification sort of thing. So create that infrastructure so that for an application developer, it feels, I mean, it, they, sh they will know how it is different from a standard data center application compared to Edge and how these APIs are basically going to enable them to make this application much more agile or uh, to the next generation network or use cases. The next is the data plane. Data plane, as you know, the work that we have done for over the years on DPDK and other stuff. So uh, we have a very scalable data plane. For us, the key, here, key thing here is with data plane, to demonstrate how multi-core architecture can be used to scale from couple of gigs to 100 gigs using one or two cores and using our Intel NICs and also in future smart NICs and FPGA. And, and, and uh, these modules are very modular, so a customer who just wants to take uh, a data plane can just remove that library and use it in their solution. And, somebody who wants the API piece can, can reuse that. Lastly, the infrastructure piece. So, uh, you know, I mean, for us, Intel, the main thing is silicon. Silicon is the vehicle for us to gain the um, uh, application advantage uh, on, uh, on our architecture. And there is a lot of work every year that happens when uh, when new generation or new microarchitecture comes up. So basically for us, in, in, in the division that where we work, which is wireless, all those silicon enhancements that happens on core, uncore, chipset, uh, FPGA, Intel NICs, and memory, all these devices, I mean, all these components, we need to have a cohesive view of exposing this to edge cloud applications. And that's what we do here, right? And, and when, once we do this enhancement and they are exposed to, first of all, the standard OpenStack and Kubernetes of the world. And second thing is it's also exposed from there to even ONAP and uh, orchestrators and also uh, uh, exposed to the application managers, which is the MEC manager here, which can use them to set policies, right? So we set policies here for, for example, using applications like four cores, dedicated cores with X amount of layer three cache. You can do that thing with our SDK and it's, that's a reference. So somebody use that as a template and they can implement that on a standard COT server based on IA. What's the role of Redis database? Uh, Redis database here is, uh, I mean, uh, you can see here it's highlighted as something which is not being developed here by us, but we are using Redis as a mechanism to store all the policies for an application. So an application can, uh, can be configured, for example, uh, let's say an application there is Netflix, and Netflix can, uh, can request for certain traffic from premium users to be diverted towards it when it receives the traffic from either the base station or core network. So in this Redis database, we are going to set, while provisioning the app, we are going to set a policy here, what are the services and traffic that Netflix application can actually request for, right? So whenever an interaction happens through that API, through the service registry, we are going to validate whether this application uh, has the capability to request for that service, and only if it passes, we are going to go ahead. And that's where, that's where all the database is stored. Yeah, so this diagram shows the uh, overview of the VM-based deployment, where uh, we just talked about 
our services are part of the SDK can be deployed in a VM. So all the traffic can go into that VM and gets distributed to various apps. So we support uh, cloud adapters from Amazon and Azure and also the standard Mac apps which can be like a CDN or ARVR apps. So this is based on uh, VM based deployment and what you are seeing on the right hand side is based on cloud native or container deployment. The same services converted into what we call as microservices and deployed uh, uh, using Kubernetes. Docker container is our runtime on the node and, and the applications here are deployed as pods compared to uh, which are bare metal containers compared to virtual machines. And the same APIs, uh, same experience happens here but the difference is if you have to set up that because of open stack complexities it might take you a couple of days to set up a data center here it might take around 20 to 25 minutes right? but the overall uh, interface for application developer remains unchanged so in order to achieve that sort of seamless uh, uh, seamless behavior between VM deployment and bare metal container deployment. Most of you might be aware, um, uh, uh, most of you might be aware that container based uh, deployment for NFV is not that mature as VM based deployment. It, it is becoming quite rapidly being adopted for NFV, but there are a lot of lot of things that have been solved over the years for VM-based NFV deployments. And we had to turn this around on a cloud native deployment in less than two quarters. So all the, let's say, enhanced platform awareness work I mentioned about resource partitioning of uh, co core allocation, cache allocation, IO allocation, memory, and SRIOV, and uh, various uh, enhancements that are there in silicon which are available for you in OpenStack. We have to get the thing now on Kubernetes. Right? That's this chart showing all the work we have been doing over last two or three quarters. And we are there today, like, I mean, there are roadmaps for each of these projects. And each of these projects have their repositories in GitHub. And, and some of them are what we call as uh, uh, what we call as, uh, you can see the uh, node discovery function is an incubation project, right? And node discovery is, for example, uh, I mean, it's a very good example to tell the, the type of work we do. Uh, let's say an application developer wants to onboard a, a, um, a machine learning app, which basically might use graphics, but it can also run on core. And that might use instructions like uh, AVX 512. AVX 512, if you are, AVX is a, a sort of a advanced instru instruction on Intel architecture. AVX 512 was the AVX uh, th 3 version of uh, instructions on Skylake uh, pr uh, processors, which supports 512 bit vectors, right? And, and uh, if we, if, applications use these instructions, we might want to discover before actually deploying the app if a particular platform supports that. And that's the part of this, uh, what we call as node feature discovery. And all these projects or plugins for Kubernetes are now encapsulated and sort of exposed seamlessly to the application developers. That's what this SDK does. In, at its core, it is showing the goodness of IA and why, as I mean, just to repeat, Intel architecture is a architecture of choice for edge deployment. So a sample view of our APIs, this is in no way a full uh, view, but uh, for us, uh, this is an overview of MM5 where applications are deployed and what's the typical flow, right? So we are not worried about OSS and uh, Mobile Edge Orchestrator, which can be an own app orchestrator. So in our SDK, we have ME Manager and the MEC platform, which is the compute node and the application. So typically the, 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 the response, uh, request and response here are based on REST API. 
uh, mech manager sets the policy you can see here configures the request it and 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 the redis database we talked about it sets all the policy once the policy is configured using the nfv infrastructure it can be either be uh, kubernetes or it can be openstack we spin up the app app says it is live and then starts once the live indication comes out right then the application is ready to start processing packets so it's quite straightforward and, and, and quite intuitive for application developers to understand what it takes in order to onboard an app. So once the app is up and running, you can see on the left hand side, once it shows that it is live, then it can request for notification. So it, and it can discover service, for example, if it wants location service. To, to, uh, to, to, to provide services to other users, then it can discover that service and if location service is available on the platform, it can subscribe to it and once it subscribes, it can get periodic notification using push notification and all these are part of our SDK which is supported. Similarly, on the right hand side, you can see uh, it can request for certain traffic so we support flexible data plane, which supports, for example, an app can say, send me all the traffic in this IP address range, send me all the traffic in this tunnel ID range, send me all the traffic that matches this port numbers, right? So it's a very flexible data plane. And, and we'll look at, look, that in, look at that in the next slide. So once these rules are requested and they are, that, that matches the policy, we are going to add those rules to the data plane. Uh, so just a view of SDK and uh, we need not go through this in detail but what we are showing here is to show that our SDK has the data plane which is modular, very intuitive and standard computer science scatter gather method and which easily can be mapped to any network, inter net network interface that supports DPDK and, and also can scale on a multi-core architecture. Right. So on the upstream, when we receive the packets, we distribute it using the various protocols onto high-speed rings. And these rings can be software rings or hardware rings. And once that is segregated, then we identify which is the target application, and then we forward that traffic. Similarly happens on downstream, we also support multiple, multiple local breakout. Local breakout is if an app onboarded onto the SDK, cannot, let's say, either for compute reasons or for other restrictions, cannot service the application in the VM, can send the traffic to a local breakout, again, which is sort of policy controlled. And in that local breakout, it can do the heavy lifting of processing and which has a bigger compute resource. So, the basic thing that we wanted to convey through this slide is that it's a scalable data plane and, and which can easily be mapped. So we have a roadmap of, uh, and if you have heard of this Intel DDP, which is a dynamic device profile, where using Fort Will and next generation Intel Nix, you can configure advanced filters on Intel Nix. And these advanced filters have standard phi tuple and also go beyond that and you can give a particular pattern in the packet. So we, we can map these for the edge and do like 60 to 70 percent of your edge net packet processing completely on the NIC, which means that you have more cores left for application developers. Right. So that's the scalability we wanted to show and, and, and the performance numbers from our data plane show that we can reach line rate for our 10 and 40 gig NIC uh, beyond 512 byte packet uh, using one of the uh, I.O. cores and uh, or in, in case like where you have lookup and I.O. we have two cores for doing that completely in software and that further reduces if you offload it to your NIC or smart NIC. So this is the architecture that we are supporting for cloud uh, uh, CSP, uh, where uh, we support onboarding of um, the apps or the IoT gateways from uh, 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 Microsoft Azure and also Greengrass. So what this basically does is, in our SDK, 
all the edge cloud APIs are supported in the uh, on the platform. So IoT is just for as an example. Let's take a scenario where you have a a mall where are, there are three types of IoT devices, right? Vending machines, thermal sensors, and security cameras. Today, these are the three. I mean, typically these kind of devices where uh, 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 where for edge processing, you would use typically Azure or Greengrass. So you have a dedicated hardware in the mall, which does that security surveillance. And that's a dedicated hardware. Let's use uh, Greengrass as an example. So you have a Greengrass core, dedicated hardware sitting on the mall, which is doing your processing. And when it sees an anomaly, it sends the packet to the cloud uh, where uh, the the, 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 because of the detection of this anomaly, then some action can be taken. So that's the concept of uh, a, a Azure or a Greengrass. And typically they are deployed on a, uh, on a dedicated hardware today. So what we, and, and they're not edge cloud apps. So what we did is we developed these Lambda functions for uh, Amazon Greengrass and also modules that uh, similar to Lambda functions which basically does all the edge cloud APIs and configuration. So any, any applications today that are existing, Greengrass application today, can import this Lambda functions or modules. Once they import it and they onboard it uh, onto a Mac uh, platform, these Lambda functions call the API and all of a sudden your green grass is now becoming, has become a virtualized instance. It need not be on a dedicated hardware and it's also an edge cloud app and it can coexist with your CDN or ARVR app, right? And, and uh, we have also, this also works in both cloud native world and VM world and also means that on a multi-core architecture, different, um, let's say edge cloud vendors can be consolidated on the same platform. And also they can consume resources from other applications, which is a new sort of use case from, uh, from, 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 from this work, right? So compute reuse and also sharing of uh, resources and also uh, sort of a service model where the IoT gateways can get service from other applications on the edge. So for the mall scenario, you will have three VMs, one for thermal sensors, one for uh, uh, vending machines, and another one for your uh, uh, security cameras coexisting on the same platform as a virtualized instance. So um, just to look, have a look, quick look at the roadmap. So uh, uh, we were talking about other apps. We are planning to start supporting open we know this is the um, uh, this is the uh, work that is happening on the uh, iotg group in in, in intel uh, basically uh, a, a, a op open we know enables um, uh, next generation api for your machine learning and ai and 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 and, and we are supporting out of the box in sdk that is happening in the second half of this year and uh, and, and supporting FPGA uh, for uh, FPGA for uh, offloads from the applications, uh, Movidius, and uh, which is for automotive. So we are working with different groups within Intel, which are basically servicing various verticals and getting all those ingredients as part of Edge Cloud, so that we become a a reference architecture which exposes all these functionalities to the app developers, right? And that's the work which is basically happening in the second half and the and the 5G NR which we went through in the Q1 of next year. So uh, different use cases, for example, uh, I'll go through this. The, the 5G use case here, you can see where all edge can play a role, right? And this is an automotive use case. Uh, uh, we have seen uh, our interactions with customer where Edge plays a key role in uh, um, mobile platooning and I mean, uh, we have heard about this uh, V2I uh, and, and also entertainment and infotainment within the vehicles uh, where Edge can play a key role. 
traffic management hd maps hd maps is one of the really widely used use case for edge where multiple uh, um, let's say uh, uh, automotive vendors can reuse the service of a single hd map service vendor and provide the mapping experience to various vehicles right and uh, over, uh, over the air update of firmware using car sync parking management uh, and and cameras and parking presence so these are some of the use cases where edge deployment plays a key role and uh, and, and this is even with some of the 4g work that has been happening today and and it is going to definitely have a, a use case with 5G because of uh, uh, new radio access technologies coming in the form of uh, uh, millimeter wave and also ultra low latency. So this is one of the trials uh, that we had done uh, with Smart Stadium in, 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 in uh, China and Shanghai in Mercedes-Benz Arena. So what you can see here is in the stadium you have users uh, and, and basically small cells are being used uh, uh, and to service the users. Um, uh, this China Unicom network. Uh, so one, there are two outcomes from this deployment. One is um, the stadium audience. Uh, basically, they, can, uh, they are basically able to enjoy the various angles of, uh, of the game that is happening. In re, I mean, almost in real time, you can see here at 0.5 seconds latency, uh, and they can have this instant replays and uh, um, stuff like that very quickly, right? And this is all happening within the arena on the edge, so that the traffic is not going all the way to the big data center to get transcoded. This was the example that you were asking for, transcoded, and 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 it, even we are servicing at 4K. Uh, or, or high definition. And another use case from this is uh, because of edge compute, uh, 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 so the general, so one of the deployments here is if you want to have, uh, uh, if you want to have live transmission or live video over the standard network compared to the edge compute network, the difference here we are showing is around 30 seconds, right? So the typical delay that you it would that the user would experience of what is happening in the in in the arena compared to what uh, he would see the user in in uh, if it traverses through the standard network compared to if you are processing on the edge and let's say he is the edge user or a premium user and he is serviced through this edge network he would see a difference of 30 seconds, right? So this is something which is in the real world that is deployed, measured, and, and, and we know the impact, right? So uh, we talked about, or we heard in today's talk about various complexities with edge deployment. We also heard from uh, uh, Oath about use cases with edge. Uh, but uh, what we are seeing with interacting with customers and also operators uh, basically is that this is moving from hype that about edge to real deployments and these are the various verticals that we are seeing where real deployments and trials are happening right there is no more ask for a killer app or why we need to do edge it is happening and, and it is happening for um, let's say in in cases where uh, the changes are basically uh, in, in less variable scenarios like enterprise or smart uh, stadiums where you can have less variability and we see that becoming more pervasive in 5G deployments. Right? And that's where I wanted to conclude and basically we wanted to make sure that the SDK um, uh, enables such trials for various, of the various verticals and as SDK users you can expect uh, the features that enable application developers to use Intel ingredients to target these verticals. Thank you.